So maybe you're a dog owner, or maybe you're thinking about getting one, or perhaps your kids are begging you for one. Well, whatever the case may be, there's plenty of things to consider when you're having a dog with your family. And here to help us sort it all out is dog training expert Andrea Arden and her friend Murphy. Hello, Murphy. <laughs> Hi Welcome. There. Thanks How for are having you? us. It's so great to have you here. Now, tell me, what's the first thing you've got to know about house training? Um, you know, I think probably the thing people people need to consider the most is management. That your number one job is to make sure that you manage your puppy to prevent them from making mistakes. Because every time you allow them to run loose, the odds are they're going to make a mistake and that's going to become a stronger habit. But the other thing that I think is really important is that there are some shortcuts that people can take to make raising a puppy in your home and dealing with those inevitable accidents easier. Um, Speaking of accidents, what yes. tips do you have for dealing with accidents? Well, I think one of the most important things people can do, you want to come down here, Murphy? Yeah. Is that they can choose, again, things that are shortcuts. And one of the shortcuts that I love the most is Stain Master Carpet and Cushion, uh -huh. which is great because it resists stains, okay. um, it releases pet hair, okay. and it reduces odor, which means that the time that you spend cleaning up after your pets is going to be reduced, and you have more time to do the fun stuff like training them and playing and all that sort of good stuff. Stain master carpet. I never Stain thought master carpet and cushion, yeah. That's great yeah. to know. And is there a, something you should keep in mind to get the most out of your playtime with the dog as well? You know, I think that people need to realize that there's two types of playtime for dogs. There's the playtime that we're interacting with them where maybe you use something like, you know, a squeaky toy and you play tug with them or you have them play fetch. But a lot of the time people, when they get a dog, they forget that the dog probably has more energy and the need for release of more energy yeah. than they have the time to provide for. So one of the things you can do is make sure that you give your dog what we call environmental enrichment. And what we're gonna do with Murphy is we're gonna take a little bit of food ah. and we're gonna put it in a toy like this and we're gonna close it up. Okay. And then if I put this down on the ground, odds are Murphy's now gonna try and push this around yeah. to get the food out. So he's gonna play with this toy as a way of en enrichment by hunting for his food from it. Oh, Come I here. see. Come around this so way. that toy really makes him go go after it. Yes. Okay. So he's he's essentially hunting for his food. Got it. Um, remember that even a young puppy has a, a pretty high energy level, and they also have a need to use their smarts. Uh -huh. So this is a way for a dog to be able to play the training game by themselves if we can't interact with them at that time. And what's the best tip for dealing with bad behavior? It's so hard when they're this cute. It is hard. I know, Murphy. Come over here. You know, I think what people need to realize is that. When we talk about bad behavior, it's typically normal dog behavior. It's just in an environment where it's not considered acceptable. So for example, the dog barking, there's not really anything wrong with yeah. the dog barking, it's what they do. It's just that when they do it in your yard or in your apartment and they bother the neighbors or you, that's when it's troublesome. Right. So again, getting back to environmental enrichment, that plays a big part in preventing behavior problems. But another thing is that using positive reward-based training. Even a puppy as young as Murphy, I can teach him to sit, I can teach him to lay down. I can teach him to do something called hand targeting, yes, uh -huh. where he touches his nose to the palm of my hand as the foundation for Come When Called. These are all things that are really, really easy to do, and they're all about the dog having fun because they're earning things they want, whether it be food or praise or anything else that they like. You and I were talking, I was trying to figure out, I've got a four-year-old and a three-year-old. When is the best age to have a dog? Because you want them to take on some of the responsibility, but you're saying you should never really expect kids to do it all. Yeah, you know, I, I, I worry when people say, I'm getting a dog for my children. Mm -hmm. Because really what we need to remember is that, is that when you get a dog and you have children in the home, you're going to always be the one as the parent who's really responsible for the dog. The children can certainly help, and I strongly encourage that. Um, but I think the right time is typically when you feel confident that your child can show adequate impulse control oh, around animals. And that means if you say to them, you know, I don't want you to grab the dog's tail, or in Murphy's case, he doesn't have much of a tail, <laughs> so I don't want you to grab their fur, um, that they can really listen to and follow through, and it's for yeah. their safety and also for the safety of the animal. Such wonderful tips. Andrea Arden, we want to thank you so much. Thank you. Murphy, can we say goodbye? You can pick I... them up and say, I'll give okay. a little treat for it. Yeah. Okay, Murphy, yeah. we're going to say goodbye. Can we say goodbye? <laughs> say, for more tips and general information, you can go to andrearden.com. Tell them, you're watching World News Now. <laughs> World News. Oh, thank you, thank you. You did a great job. You did a great job. You deserve a treat. You deserve a treat. Yeah, they do deserve a treat. I don't <laughs> <get> that one. <laughs> <laughs> so adorable. Yeah.